Welcome back everybody. This is part... what part is this? Should be part 7 of our controller modeling series. Um, so today we're going to be adding a couple more... Um, we're going to be tweaking a few more things to our controller, maybe adding another texture, and if we have time we'll also be um, rendering out a test image. So first things first, I actually kind of want to tweak these buttons a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to do is, let's see, I was experimenting a bit, so yeah, what I need to do is I'm going to hit A. You don't have to do this. I'm just going to quickly do something real quick. Okay, so yeah, there was a couple things that I tweaked in the last episode. So first, one thing that I want to do today is um, I want to move these buttons a little bit, because on the controller they they more naturally like flow to it. Um, and since we... Oh, excuse me. Since we actually remember, we parented these um, we parented these um, letters to the to the clear button. So what we, all we really have to do is um, move them around, and they'll follow. So I'm going to first rotate this one on the x-axis, the top button, and with the arrow select, I'm just going to kind of pull it back a bit into the thing. But I also want to make sure that um, the letter is still just outside of it. So that looks good. Um, same thing with the side one, except I want to twist on the Y, so I'm going to hit R and then Y. I'm going to pull that back a bit. Again, making sure that that letter is still on the outside, which you can barely see. Um, I think the bottom and side ones are good, so we'll leave those as is. Um, I also think these could be a little bit smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the front view, and I'm going to just scale these buttons down a bit till they, they fit the, um, the reference picture a bit better. So I think they're a little too big. Okay. They still look pretty big, but oh well. Um, and don't forget to save your thing, of course. Um, I think that's good. Also, let's see if we can add a quick roughness map to this um, controller to um, to better um, to make it look a little bit more realistic for free. Basically, we don't have to do too much to it. Um, so I'm going to single it out. Shift H. We're going to go into Material View. Um, and what I want to do is I want to use a roughness map. Um, so if you're not familiar with a roughness map, is basically you use black and white color data from an image, and you use it to add a little bit of dirt and grime to your object. And the reason you want to make your object look dirty is things in the real world are very rarely ever that clean, um, and it makes your object look just that little bit more realistic. So it's pretty nice. So um, also. I might. I think I'm also going to make this a little bit less um, reflective. So I'm going to go to the roughness for this principal node, and we're going to take the roughness slider up a little bit, about 0.7. That should be good. Um, well, let's actually copy that, and let's Alt H bring everything back, and let's just kind of do that for all of our objects. So I'm just going to copy and paste this uh, roughness setting here. On everything that needs it. Uh, same thing with this button. And uh, up here, that's already changed. That's already changed since they're sharing the same texture thing. And that should be all I have to change. Um, okay, I'm going to single out the controller again. So, yeah, we want to add a roughness map. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift A and then click on the search bar. I'm going to type in image texture and we're going to add in a fingerprint um, overlay, which I should have in the, um, in the description. And as you can see here, it's just a bunch of fingerprints, basically. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I don't, we might have to change it a little bit. Um, let's grab in um, an, what is it, a mapping node, and the, yeah, mapping right here. And we'll drag the vector down to here. And we also need Geometry? Yeah, we also need a geometry node, I believe. Okay, I found it. So what we want is a texture coordinate. So just type in the search texture coordinate right there. We're going to take the UV node and put it down here in this matching one down here. And while on point mode, what we can do is we can change the scale. So I'm going to try three. Let's see how that looks. So change everything to three. Um, maybe that's a little bit too much. We'll change it to two. I think that looks good. So you can see this is what it'll look like. Um, if we took the, um, the texture and put it right into the material output, uh, but instead I'm going to leave it on the on the principal shader. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to use this to control the factor in a mix shader. So we're going to type in mix, shift A. There's a mix shader right there. I'm going to take the color and put it into the factor, and we're going to make sure color is set to non-color data like that. Um, as you can see, there's our, um, there, you can kind of see the fingerprints on it. Um, let's see if we, yeah, so I think what we want to do is let's just add in a diffuse. So I'm going to add in a diffuse shader right here. Or no, we'll add in, I think another, we'll add another, in another principle and just kind of put this up here because I also want to, I basically just want to, or you know what we can do? We're going to just copy and paste this. So control C, control V while selecting that principled shader. We'll add this down here. And all we have to really do is um, tweak the roughness a bit. Let's see here. Yeah, that should be good. Yeah, so basically what I did was I made, um, so this is going to be our uh, fingerprint in that basically. So I took the roughness and I bumped it up all the way. Um, so you can see where the fingerprints are. And this one stays at its slightly shiny phase and it goes to the top input and the uh, roughness one goes to the bottom one. Um, so this setup's a little wonky, but it works. <laughs> so um, and now you can see we have fingerprints on our controller. So if we hit Alt-H and bring everything back, hiding the normals, so hide, hide. You can see there's our um, controller and it looks a little bit more realistic and this isn't even with cycles rendering so cool um, yeah if we wanted to if we wanted to we could probably add it also to these like triggers and stuff but I think that's fine for now um, yeah uh, I think I also wanted to tweak these um circle things right here that like house the thumbsticks so let's hop back over to layout view Let's just kind of take a peek here. So um, I think for this, all I'll do is I'll turn on um, auto smoothing, which can be done over here in object data. You go down to normals and click auto smooth. And that doesn't quite do what I want it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the angle and set it all the way to 180. I'm going to manually come in here in edge select mode and select this edge and this edge. And then I'm going to hit, what is it? I think I can just come up here. So I'm going to go to edge up here. I'm going to hit mark sharp right here. And you notice they turn blue and they look much sharper, but it also keeps the smoothness everywhere else on the object. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I'm going to set these auto smooth up here. I'm going to set it to 180. And I'm going to select these two edges and hit um, edge and then mark sharp like so. So we keep that sharpness while. Um, also keeping the smoothness as well. It's kind of like a nice balance. So you can see our controller is looking pretty good. Um, if I wanted to, I could probably add an Xbox um, logo right there. But for now, I think it looks fine. Um, if you want to do that yourself, you should be able to figure it out. It's as simple as um, going to the UV editing tab and finding um, where this, where these faces are right here. So for example, if you hit C, or C to circle select, you can select these um, faces. Maybe it'd be a bit better if I did that. And you can see here that, um, let's see. Yeah, so you can see it's this weird mix right here. So you probably would want to um, UV unwrap a bit better than I did, like going to edge select and then selecting, selecting the edges that you need to um, actually unwrap it and then go from there. But yeah, I think that's good for now. So what I want to do is I want to actually kind of render out an, um, an image for this, you know, so you guys can like show it to your friends or family and see what you learned in Blender. Um, but we want to make sure everything is uh, parented to the controller. So that way when you move the controller body, it doesn't do any of that glitching and everything follows it nice and smoothly. So what we need to do is first we need to actually clear the parenting for the text because you'll see if I select everything and then if I parent it to the controller for some reason um, oh the text actually didn't have a hissy fit um, hmm. 
I'll redo it anyways because it was I was having problems when I did it. I don't know if I fixed it somehow, but uh, basically what you have to do is if your text is giving you problems, you select the text and then you hit F3 and you hit type in um, clear parent. And when you click clear parent, you want to make sure you click um, clear and keep transform so it unparents it, but it doesn't move the text. So I'm just going to do that. Um, clear parent, clear clear parent, keep transform, and I'm just going to do that for all of these real quick. Clear parent, keep transform. Okay, so there's no parents, and if you want to double check on all the objects, you just type in clear parent, keep transform. And now what we can do is we can make sure that this is the only thing in our scene, so only the controller objects or all the things relating to it. I'm going to hit A to select everything, and if you shift click the controller body, it'll turn yellow, which means it's the selected object, kind of like when we're doing the sculpting normal map trick. Um, and now if we hit F3 when we type in um, parent and we hit enter, and we'll get object, it will parent everything to, uh, to the controller body. So you see now if I move just the controller body, everything's moving. I can rotate it, and it's all good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a plane that will be the um, base of the that will kind of have like what the controller is resting on. Um, and I'm going to go to the side view. And I'm going to drag this down a little bit. I'm going to click on the controller and I'm going to rotate it so it's kind of lying down on its side. Um, and I'll I'll do that a bit. And then I'm going to get that plane again. And with it selected, I can see it, so I can just kind of drag it up. And it's okay if it's intersecting it a little bit. 3D isn't always precise, 100% precise. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift A and add in a camera. I'm going to hit zero on the numpad to snap to it, and I'm going to hit N and then click on Lock Camera to View. And then now when I move the uh, my viewport around, it also moves the camera with as well. So that's nice. I'm going to zoom in just close enough. Um, we don't want to be too close because remember we had those ugly seams on the thumbsticks. So a little lazy of me, but oh well. Um, so there's our camera over there. I turned off lock to camera to view so I can actually move my viewport around now. Um, and one thing you can do if you want a cool like 360 shot like you saw at the beginning of the series, um, what you can do is you can hit Shift A and then we're going to add in an empty with, with a plain axis. And we're going to drag this up. And you can see it's just a little object that we can use for various utilities. So with um, the camera selected, I'm going to shift click the empty, hit F3, make parent, and then click object. And now you'll see when I um, move the um, empty around, it moves the camera width. So what you can do with this, if I go into the camera view by hitting zero, see I still have the empty selected. If I hit R and then Z, and then I move it on the Z axis, you can see how we're getting this cool like 360 degree shot. So what we can do with this is we can animate it. So with the axis, with the plane um, axis selected, I'm going to go down to keying and making sure I'm on frame one by right clicking and moving it around. I'm going to click keying. I'm going to hit active key set to rotation because we just want to key the keyframe the rotation. I'm going to hit keying. I'm going to hit plus, and it you'll notice that um, it says down here successfully added three keyframes to rotation. So now we have three keyframes for the rotation of the axis. And what we can do is we can come over to 160. Um, actually, um, we'll stay at, we'll stay over here at one for now. And what I'll do is I'm going to press Z and then X, and I'm going to just rotate it in one direction like this until it goes all the way around. And then I'm going to click, and then ooh, actually I should have been on frame 160. Sorry. So while on frame 160, I'm going to hit R Z. Rotate it around like this, and then click, and then I'm going to go to keying, and let me hit the plus button again, and you'll notice it said three keyframes set to rotation. And if I go to the beginning and hit play, you'll see that, look, it's going around in a circle. Pretty cool. And if you want to make sure that um, it stops wherever you put the keyframes, so make sure you set end over here to 160 if you put it where I put um, my keyframes. And if I go into camera view and hit play, you can, give, you can see what this animation actually looks like. So it looks pretty cool. Um, and actually, I kind of want it to start on a different look. Um, I want it to start on a different side of the controller, so I'll just kind of rotate this a bit, place it right there, and you can see now if we play, you get a cool, like, Lazy Susan style rotation around the controller, so 
looks cool. Um, now what we can do is, making sure we're saving of course, um, I'm going to hide this menu by hitting N. Um, we could actually make render this animation right now. Um, and uh, we want to make sure that we ha also have an HDRI. Sorry, I almost forgot that. So I think I did it earlier off camera. But what you can do is you click on this little globe right here, which um, is the World tab. And um, it's not here now. But for example, um, there's a little button here that says Use Nodes Under Surface. And if you click that, you'll get this menu right here. And if you hit open, you can open an HDRI image. So what an HDRI image is like a 360 degree picture, which you can use to get light, uh, which you can use to project light into your scene. So I have one in the resource folder that I got from Polygon, which is called HDR Studio Product Soft Light. And this is a free texture on the website. So I'm not giving you one of their like premium textures. So I'm going to click on 2K. I'm going to click on the um, HDRI.EXR file and hit open image. And you'll notice when I do that and go into rendered view, we have this like cool studio lighting surrounding our object. So it looks pretty cool, and you can see, you know, if I hit play, it'll look glitchy in cycles because this is like a real-time render, but yeah, it looks pretty neat. So I'm gonna go back to one. I'm gonna get out of rendered view. So now you could actually just render this as an animation. So um, obviously you'd want to make sure your samples are pretty high. I think for this one, 350 would be fine. Um, it depends on the uh, buttons. If I render an image real quick, let's take a look. So you can see here, if I stop the render, um, it's a little bit noisy around our buttons, so we probably want to bump that up a bit higher. Um, you probably go as high as like 450. Um, it's really personal preference on how nice you want your animation to look. Um, and since you would be move, since the camera is moving, it'd be a bit harder to tell. But uh, 450 should be fine. Um, and you want to make sure your your, um, your settings are all good, like uh, tile size if you're using GPU and stuff. Um, my bathroom tutorial series has one that talks about how to render your scene towards the end. So I'm not going to talk about it too much. Um, but one more important thing you'd want to know is under um, output right here, you want to make sure that you're saving them to the right folder. Um, and you want to make sure you're saving them in like PNG or um, JPEGs because if for some reason you need to stop the animation or Blender crashes, you can always pick up on the last frame that you rendered. So, yeah, so that's about it for this series. Um, I'll pump out a quick render real quick so we can see um, the final result that we did with this series. So you can hear, see here, here's our final render for the uh, controller. Um, if we wanted to, we could bump the samples up, or you could probably would want to set a cooler um, ground texture for the image. Um, but yeah, so you can see our buttons look really nice and snazzy. You can see the diamond pattern around the uh, thumbstick. You can see the buttons on the controller. Um, and the fingerprints look a little less desirable than I thought they would be, but you know, if you wanted to keep the, um, the shininess of it, more pristine look, um, you could always leave that off the uh, section that I did. Um, and the buttons, I think, actually looked better before the program crashed, so I kind of speedily put them together. But, you know, this series was more about teaching the, some basic fundamentals, like how to use some modifiers and stuff. Um, the text, you know, um, texturing, adding basic button looks and everything. So, yeah. So that's pretty much it for this series. Um, I can't really... If I come up with anything else, I'll upload it. But, yeah, so... If you had any comments or concerns, please please put them below. I'm always looking for that criticism. Um, you know, if you wanted something different from this, you know, please give me more ideas. Um, I'm trying to find you know what tutorial series would be nice that haven't been made already. You know, uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. Um, and if you like content like this, please subscribe. And you know, yeah. Anyways, that's about it. So thanks for watching and have a good one.